Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, then welcome. My name's Christina and on my channel, we talk all things beauty from my own experiences. And today I am answering one of your biggest questions or categories, I should say, and it's my hair. <laughs> I get a lot of questions about my hair history, about what I do in terms of treatments with my hair, the tools I use, the products I like, and the treatments, did I say treatments already? The treatments I do on my hair. So today I'm covering everything in this video for you guys. I'm gonna leave chapters so you can like skip around as you wish. I've gone into my comments and I've tried to compile as many of your questions as possible. If I miss anything, please let me know in the comments down below. This is gonna be a pretty long video and I honestly didn't anticipate for it to be very long because I was like, I'm pretty low maintenance when it comes to my hair. But when I was collecting all of the things that I have that I use in my hair, I started to realize maybe I'm not as low maintenance with it as I thought. So a little bit of background on my hair. So all of this is my real hair. It's pretty long. Currently I am due for a cut. It's been quite a while. Like it's been a couple months now and I don't typically go this long without getting my hair cut. But honestly, I was traveling a lot and I just, it was the last thing on my mind. This is all of my natural color as well. I spent the last, mm, I wanna say two to three years just completely completely growing my hair out and letting all of the color just disappear and get cut off. We're at a point now where everything is just my natural hair color. I started to color treat my hair back in 2014 and I did that up until I want to say around 2019 and then immediately after that 2019 I started to get my hair permed. I would get American Wave perms. I also have some videos covering it where I take you with me when I get a perm and I kind of talk about my whole experience having the perms. So I did, I believe, three different times. I permed it three different times. I noticed after color treating it for so long and then getting it permed for so long, my hair was starting to change a little bit, become a little bit more damaged. I will say that I have pretty resilient hair, but I did notice that after the third perm, my hair or my scalp was changing a lot. It just started to get very dry, really flaky, and my hair in general was just a lot more coarse. So I I decided a little bit after COVID, since I wasn't really going anywhere anyways, I just decided that maybe I would just let my hair do its natural thing. It just kind of went from there. That's when I started to grow it out and get rid of the color and let the perm kind of die down in my hair. I try to get my hair cut every six to eight weeks. I was very good about it last year up until like the beginning of this year. Before that, I was doing it every six to eight weeks. It's really important, at least for whenever you're rehabbing your hair, that you get it trimmed. So you trim off all the dead ends and you just kind of reset your hair, you know? I do use heat on my hair. I will be talking about the tools that I use, all of that stuff and also the products. I want to say one of the biggest questions is how I style my hair, the type of tools or specific tools that I use. So that is the next topic that I want to cover. We're going to talk about all of my different hair tools and treatments. So the newest addition and probably the most exciting for me personally to my treatment hair care routine is going to be this little guy right here. In here, we have the iRestore Elite device. So iRestore is actually sponsoring this video for you guys today. And the reason why I decided to work with iRestore is because I actually saw Cassandra Bankson as well as Dr. Dre talking about this specific device and they talked all about their experience with hair growth with it. Like I mentioned earlier in this video, I have been focusing on basically hair rehab. I think that with the damage that I had done on my hair when it comes to color treatment as well as perming my hair and on top of that, COVID happening. I had it twice. One of the symptoms with COVID that you could experience was actually hair loss and like hair thinning. And I definitely experienced that the second time around of having COVID. And I had a lot of thinning, a lot of like hair loss, especially like here in my hairline. When I pull my hair back, you can see a lot of my scalp. And that was not the case maybe three years ago or so. Like I definitely had fuller hair hair stress 
on top of COVID, on top of just general aging, I think has really taken a toll on my hair. So I thought that this would be a great opportunity to see how this device worked on my hair and also to give you guys, again, my experience with using this. I use LED light therapy on my face for anti-aging as well as specifically for acne. I love using LED therapy on my face. I find that it makes such a big difference on top of using it with different products. And I've always heard that using it on your hair really helps to just generate hair growth. Results with this iRestore Elite device shows 43% increase in hair count in just four months. And the way that this works is it actually uses low light therapy to enhance cell metabolism, to reduce inflammation on the scalp and to improve blood flow. And when you improve the blood flow in your scalp, it helps to provide nutrients and oxygen and remove any waste in your hair hair follicles, thus allowing your hair to grow a lot stronger and a lot faster. It also has this pouch that houses the battery pack. It's a rechargeable battery pack. You just clip it on there, it beeps, and then you turn it on. It also has medical grade cushions and a safety sensor that automatically shuts the device off when it detects the device isn't being worn. So this has 500 medical grade lasers and LEDs. So the combination of the lasers and LEDs, basically the lasers provide deeper spot stimulation in the scalp and then the LEDs provide broader uniform coverage to fill in the gaps that the lasers might not be able to reach. With the combination of those two things, it provides complete scalp coverage to make sure that the light energy is evenly distributed the entire time that you're doing your treatment. I really like the fact that this is a non-invasive and proven way to grow your hair. I will show you guys before and afters here so you can see. Obviously, I just started my hair growth journey with this product, so I don't have any noticeable results just yet. I've been using it for about two weeks now, and on top of all of that this is supposed to be the most powerful at home device on the market i'm very very excited to go on this journey for you guys you know that i love to document using different devices and different tools for you showing you all of my personal before and afters i will show you all of my befores so you can see everything and i will be documenting this as the weeks progress but if you guys want to join me on my little hair growth journey then i will have a discount code down below for you guys so you can save a little bit of money on this device and also just so you know they do have a 12 month money back guarantee if you're not happy with your results so i definitely think it's worth checking out the first hair tool i want to talk about is the hair waiver that i always use i have two hair waivers but i wanted to talk about this one specifically because this is the one that i use the majority of the time so this is the bondi boost 32 millimeter hair waiver it has three large barrels here as you can see it splits off two here and then one right here with the little waves and it has this little rest. I got this at Ulta. It goes on sale fairly often and I would recommend getting it on sale just because, you know, save a little money. It gives me such big, bouncy, lush waves. It gives me the look of when my perm was just wavy, you know, and it looked like it could have been natural waves in my hair. This is kind of the effect that this waver gives me and I really enjoy this one. Just kind of hard to travel with, I will say, just cause it's so large but it is flat so it can like lay down in your suitcase. I've pretty much taken this on every trip that I've taken this year and I just love it. It's super easy and the waves that this creates lasts all day and it also lasts a couple of days actually. It can be a combination of the products that I use as well as this specific waiver. Um, I'm sure it is a combination of the two but I will say that no matter what products I use, the first day, my hair always looks so good with this. I have an entire video dedicated to talking about my hair waivers, this one and the other one that I own. I will link that in the description box down below for you guys in case you wanna see a full tutorial on how I wave my hair. As far as my super easy everyday go-to like blowout look, if I don't 
actually do a blowout in my hair, then I'm going to be using this product. You guys have probably seen it all over TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, literally everywhere. This is the Wavy Talk. This is the one from Amazon that has the different attachments and it just comes off like this. But almost always I'm using this as like a hot brush, a hot roller brush. I have a video on this as well, just a short video. I'll link it down in the description box down below for you guys but I got this I believe sometime last year and this is going to be my go-to whenever I want to add a little bit of texture and again make it kind of look like I have some sort of blowout going on just emphasize my layers and stuff you guys ask me all the time how I like get that look it's just this when I purchased this it was about $20 on Amazon but since then unfortunately they have raised the price because of the popularity of it I believe that it retails for about $50 now on Amazon. I can't be entirely sure, but I will say that I think that it's worth $20. I think it's worth $50. This has not failed me. And this is so travel friendly because it comes apart and you can like easily store it that way. And also if you wanted to bring the other attachments like the curler, the bubble curler, those things, you could also bring those as well and just have one tool with you. I find that I have to leave this plugged in for a bit longer than my waver and my curling iron to get as hot as I need it to be to go through my hair and really like get my hair sleek and bouncy. It just takes a couple more minutes. I will note that I always use it on level two. I think that they have a newer version where it has like a digital screen right here that shows you the actual temperature. If my hair is already dry, then I will use this. But if my hair is freshly washed and I want to do a blowout, then I would use my Dyson Air Wrap. Okay, my Dyson Air Wrap, I do want to give this a little shout out. This is the one that I purchased last Christmas, I believe. I did a whole video talking about the Dyson, trying it for the first time and comparing it to my Shark Flex style. After that video, I did end up purchasing this. You guys had asked me if I did purchase one and I, I did. <laughs> this is is so beautiful. I just love, oh, I love the color of this. I'm so happy with the aesthetics of the one that I purchased. I use this whenever my hair is wet and I want to style it whenever it's wet. I love the round brush attachment. I love the smoother on it too. I feel like this is so slept on. I never really use the curling attachments just because I find that when it comes to curling my hair, I prefer my curler, which I'm gonna talk about next. In terms of if I think the Dyson Airwrap is worth it, to be 100% honest with you guys, I love the results. I love using it at home, but lately it has not been my go-to. I've just been kind of, like I said earlier, a little bit low maintenance when it comes to styling my hair. I didn't even buy my Dyson full price, so I can't say that I think it's worth it full price. I think it's definitely worth it if you get a good deal off of it, you know. If you guys want videos on my Dyson or really any of these tools, please let me know in the comments down below and I would love to film those for you guys because I never really know what to film when it comes to like hair stuff. And the curler that I mentioned is this one right here. I used it today so it is still a little bit hot but this is the Bio Ionic 1.25 inch curler. It's the one and a quarter curling iron and it's the long barrel. And I love this specifically because of this longer barrel. Since I have long hair, the longer barrel just makes curling my hair go by a lot, a lot faster. I can't say that I have been this loyal and in love with a curler since before getting this, you know? I remember I purchased it April 2022 because it was like right before my wedding and I've been using it ever since. It heats up the hair very, very evenly. The long barrel just makes it so much faster to curl my hair. It has the heat temperatures right here. I like to use it on the highest heat. Please don't come for me. Listen, I know that you guys are like, you don't need more than this much temperature in your hair. But trust me when I say I'm protecting my hair. So far, it's been pretty good. It barely looks used, but I'm telling you guys, pretty much every time that I curl my hair, I'm using this one and I love it. It gives me the best, shiniest curls and it lasts all day. It's incredible. Overall, I would say that it keeps my hair curled for anywhere between one to three days before 
it like completely falls. That is with product. I do believe that when it comes to hair tools, you have to use hair products if you want some longevity. That's just kind of how it goes, especially if you have a hair texture that is straighter, that is a little bit more stubborn, and it doesn't hold hairstyles as much as, you know, other people's hair might. A couple of non-hot tool tools that I love using, I constantly use. The first one being this little guy. It's just a scalp massager that I purchased on Amazon years and years ago, and I've been using it ever since it's great it has like the silicone brushes right here it's nice and pointy so it really gets in there I feel like it really stimulates the scalp but I love to use this in the shower I actually have another one um, a bigger one that I use before I get into the shower on wash days I will go in with my hair dry and I'll just scrub this all over the hair really loosen up all of the dry shampoo all of the product any flaking anything like that I will completely loosen from my scalp and then I'll get in the shower and I'll wash my hair. I wash my hair twice in the shower with shampoo. The first one I'll go in with a little bit, get my scalp all lathered up, and then I'll use this, really scrub it, really disperse my shampoo, rinse that out, and then I'll do a second shampoo. And by that time, if you've really like worked the shampoo in your hair and really got that grime out, you should get a really nice fluffy soapy lather with your shampoo. I feel like it really gets in there more than what my fingers can do. Of course I go in there with my fingers and I like massage it and stuff, but you know, if you have nails or something, this is super handy. I really enjoy this and I highly recommend that everyone get one of these. They're super inexpensive too. You can basically find them anywhere these days. Can you guys believe that a couple of years ago, maybe like two, less than three years ago, I didn't use a hairbrush. A lot of that had to do with the fact that I had a perm and I would only brush my hair when it was wet. I had specific like hairbrush, curly hairbrush, hairbrush? I had specific curly hairbrushes back then and after that when I let my perm kind of die down, I started using brushes. I don't know, it sounds so silly saying it out loud, but I love hair brushes and I forgot how much they make a difference in my hair, but this is the hairbrush that I've been using. It's so gross. It has like towel lint. I don't even know what that is. This is the Epic Professional hairbrush. I like the ones that don't have like the squishy back, you know, because I feel like it's easier to clean and it goes through my hair a lot better. This one has been very, very durable. I think that I got this either at Target or Ulta. Um, I can't remember entirely, but I love this. It's great. It's nice and big. It gets through my hair very, very nicely. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. One that I have in the shower. I had a wet brush for a very, very long time, and I actually went through a couple of wet brushes, but all of them broke. Either they fell or just as I was using them, they broke. So recently, I actually purchased this one from Target. I got the mini travel size one because I had some trips coming up, and I was like, well, I'm might as well just get a mini. And this is the brand Unbrush. I believe this is fairly new, but it's very similar to a wet brush as you can see right here. It does have that back right there where it's a little bit more flexible, but it's still very easy to clean because it does have that honeycomb opening right there. After I condition my hair in the shower, I like to brush my hair with this so I can evenly distribute all of the conditioner and also detangle my hair. So that is what that one is for. A couple of other brushes. I like this little pick brush right here just to get a really nice middle part or just any part in general when I'm styling my hair. If I need to get some sections out, then I'll use this one. And also this is really great for slick backed ponytails as well. And another one that I like to use for my slick back ponytails, this is the Annie double brush. It's like a boar bristle brush. I should have gotten rid of all the hair in all of these brushes, but... <laughs> I didn't, I'm so sorry. But this one is so nice because it has two different bristle sides. This side right here is going to be a little bit softer and then this is going to be a lot more coarse. I like using this um, on slicked back buns and ponytails and stuff. I will go in with more of this coarse side to really get all the hair in there, get all the lumpies and bumpies out of my hair. And then I will turn it around and smooth everything out with the softer side. I almost forgot to grab this one. 
And I really love this tool. I feel like not a lot of people talk about this or maybe I, I don't know, maybe I'm just missing it, but this is the sleepy tie. I purchased this, I don't know, earlier this year and I love this thing. So essentially what it is, it's a big old scrunchie that has um, some foam in there, if you can see right there. And then this pink part is just a loose scrunchie. And what this does is it preserves your hairstyle specifically for me I find my blowouts get preserved really well you just kind of put your hair up in a ponytail wrap it all around this part right here kind of like you're doing heatless curls almost but you'll wrap it all the way around and then you just tie your hair up like you normally would sleep with it like that it's super super comfortable it doesn't pull on my hair this silk satin material is really nice because it keeps your hair from getting frizzy and then when i remove this from my hair i barely have to do any heat touch ups oh and i should mention while i put my hair up in ponytails and buns and stuff like that that's pretty much the only time I will use hair ties. Other than that, I am using claw clips. I find that that really helps, or at least I think it really helps with breakage in the hair. You always hear that hair ties aren't the best for hair because it does pull your hair. It does cause damage. It does cause breakage and stuff. So as often as I can, whenever I have my hair up, I do have it in claw clips. I have a ton of claw clips everywhere. I have bigger ones. I have medium ones. This is like my go-to. It's a scoochie one. I don't know what this one is it's probably scoochy or goody as well i have like tiny little ones to do like half up dues i just have them laying all over the place okay let's talk about hair products now this part is the part where i was like wow i really do have a lot of hair products i did not realize how much I use. They kind of cycle through, but I wanted to pick out all of the products that I have recently in the last six months or so, or even longer, I've still been using in my routine. I reach for absentmindedly, stuff like that. So I want to go over those. I guess first we can talk about hair products that I use in the shower, as well as talk about my hair wash routine. I like to wash my hair every other to every two days. Before that, I was trying to wash my hair a lot less because, you know, people say that you don't have to wash your hair that much and it just like dries out your hair, yada, yada, yada. And when I had a perm, that was very, very true. I did not wash my hair as often. I would say when I had a perm, I would go anywhere between four to seven days without washing my hair. I know that sounds crazy, but hear me out. I think that your hair texture really, really determines the way or how often you should wash your hair. So I was under the impression again that I just, I shouldn't wash my hair that often, but that just wasn't the case. I find that my hair thrives the most when I wash it every other day to every two or three days, I guess I could say. Um, and the reason being is because again, I have pretty straight, pretty naturally straight hair. It is very thick but I also have a very oily scalp. I have oily skin, I have an oily scalp. In order to allow my hair products to really do their job, I have to kind of wash my hair a little bit more often so I can start with a clean slate and that's when my hair looks the best. So I kind of touched up on how I start my hair wash days. On those days that I wash my hair, like I said, before I do anything with my hair, I will go in with a massage scalp brush and I'll go in, go in circular motions for a couple minutes, really getting all of that dirt and grime out of my scalp. And once a week, I will go in with a hair oiling treatment. If you don't know what hair oiling is, it's an incredible treatment. I believe that the origins are of Indian descent. And basically what you do is you take oil, you put it all through your scalp, you massage it in, and it helps to stimulate growth in your hair. It helps with your hair follicles just becoming stronger. There's a lot of good that comes out of hair oiling. I highly recommend it. I started hair oiling with my Fable and Main Holly Roots hair oil. This one is almost out actually. It's a very understated smelling hair oil. It's not too strong whatsoever, but this is beautiful. I like to take this dropper. I part my hair in different sections, do a couple drops, and then I will just massage all of that in. And I really focus on like 
back here close to my hairline and the top of my scalp as well and this really really helps to just nourish my hair i've seen a huge difference especially because i started using this when i was still getting that perm like all of the perm chemicals out of my hair you know i feel like this definitely helped my hair to become a lot shinier and healthier and stronger way faster than it may have without it i love this and then they sent me the fable and main amla smoothing soothing serum this is a scalp serum and i kind of use it the exact same way that i use this I believe that you can use them the same exact way, but I'll just like interchange them. So one week I'll use this one, one week I will use this. And again, this one is almost out as well. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I have been using these, I'm pretty sure since last year. So they have lasted me a very, very long time. And truly, I feel like these have completely transformed the flakiness and the dryness of my scalp that was caused from perming my hair so often. I will say the first time I permed my hair, I barely saw a difference with my scalp health. And then the second time, it wasn't until my third perm that I was like, oh, my hair is actually very, like my scalp is very flaky. And it was starting to feel like my hair was getting a little coarse and brittle, like I mentioned earlier. So this, I think, really helped save my hair if you have any treatments such as a perm and you find that maybe you have a little bit of a flaky dry scalp try hair oiling whenever you have your wash days i'm almost positive that it will help your scalp because i'm telling you guys these are incredible with both of these it is recommended that you leave it in the hair for x amount of time you can do anywhere between a couple of minutes to a couple hours to overnight I believe that's the case for this one as well. Yeah, it says for best results, leave it in overnight. But you guys, I found with me, I don't like leaving it in overnight. I don't have an issue. Like it doesn't stain my pillows or anything like that. I actually left it in overnight for a long time while using these. But I noticed that I was getting a little bit of um, clogged pores almost in my on my scalp, like bumps and stuff. Almost felt like pimples. So when I use these, I actually will massage them in, tie my hair back, and I'll leave it for about an hour, maybe two hours, and then I'll wash my hair. I will not sleep with it overnight just because for me personally, it's a little bit clogging, but the hour to hour mark is perfect to give me just enough hydration and shine. These two are actually from Briogeo. And again, I will do this once a week or so, just change it up. I will use any of these. I really, it just really depends on what I feel like. If I'm like, I need a little more nourishment in my scalp, then I want this. And then if I really, really want to detox my scalp, I'll use these. But these are the Briogeo Scalp Revival line. This one is the Charcoal and Tea Tree Buildup Detox Spray. I actually think that I use this one the most when I have been styling my hair a lot and I've been using a lot of styling products. So hairspray, texturing spray, um, heat spray, all those things, like any sort of like hair paste or anything like that, I will reach for this one to detox my scalp and just kind of reset it completely. This can be a little bit drying. So I would say, again, once a week, sometimes I'll go in twice, like whenever I wash my hair, it, like twice a week, I'll go in with one of my hair oiling products. And then the next time I wash my hair, I'll go in with a detox product. Again, just feel it out, see what works for your hair. But if I want a little bit more nourishment than what this can give me, I need a little bit of something. I will use the Rosemary pre-wash oil. This is technically hair oiling, but I find that this one feels a little bit lighter in the hair. So if you have fine, very thin hair, I actually think that you would really benefit from this one. It has that fine tip right there. So you don't have a drop or anything. You can literally, again, let me close this. You can literally just go in section by section and squeeze some product out, massage it in, and then wait. For this one, I believe you only leave it in, yeah, for up to 15 minutes, because again, it can be a little bit drying. And this one says you can do 10 to 15 minutes or overnight. I treat this one the same way I treat my Fable and Main ones. I will leave it anywhere between a couple minutes to an hour or two. Okay, let's talk about in the shower now. So on 
like a regular basis. I will go in with this shampoo and conditioner. I've talked about this over and over again. I These are my second bottles of both of these. These are the Necessaire Rosemary Shampoo and Conditioner. This is absolutely incredible. It says that it's strengthening and cleansing on the scalp and I can attest to that. I think that this has really clarified my hair. It makes my hair feel stronger. I feel like my hair has been extremely shiny since I started using these. Me and my husband both use these and both of us are really, really obsessed with this. It just makes your hair feel clean. It feels like my hair has a little bit of volume because there's no product whatsoever in there. Like weighing it down, you know what I mean? I will say that the, the scent of them, I wasn't crazy about when I first started using them. They do smell like rosemary, but they also kind of smelled like the, the candles, the um, citronella candles, but it kind of grew on me, I'm not gonna lie. It, it's of course a personal thing. It doesn't smell like this in your hair too strongly after you get out of the shower and stuff, at least for me because I do use other products after my shower, but these overall incredible, I love these, I had to, get new bottles whenever we ran On out. my super cleansing days, whenever I use my scalp hair oiling products, I like to do a complete detox in the shower as well. One product that I have been using is from Avrani. This is the Scalp Detox Jelly Cleanser. It has lotus and glycolic acid. I think you can kind of see in the light here. I have used about this much of this product. It is quite a large tube. This is an 8.4 fluid ounce bottle right here. It has that little scrubber right there, which I think is a really cool touch, but I will say that the size of this compared to the size of this kind of unmatched. Like I like to go in, put this all over my scalp and then use a separate scrubber, especially because this bottle is so large. It kind of, it's kind of hard to get a good grip on this and really massage it in. My arm does get tired after a while, so I love the product and I like to go in with a different hair massager, but if you're in a pinch, maybe you're traveling or maybe you just don't want to use two different things, it has it built in. And I think if you had less hair than I did, you could probably get away with just, just using this. It has little beads in them. And what does it say about that? It helps to exfoliate and deep cleanse the scalp, I noticed a difference right away. Like when I first used this, I did the same thing that I normally do. I'll go in with the first shampoo, rinse it out. I only go in with a little bit. And then my second cleanse, I'll go in and get it really lathered, you know? This lathers up really, really well. And my hair, you guys, felt so lightweight and so smooth, I was impressed. I think when it comes to hair products, especially like shampoos, conditioners, and, and treatments and stuff that you use in the shower, I can kind of tell right away the ones that I will really enjoy. And this was definitely one that I really enjoyed. Next, I have this product from A Pew. This is the Raspberry Hair Vinegar. It is an Asian brand. And this one is very interesting. It's kind of like, um, if you've ever used the L'Oreal Revive like water hair micellar thing, it's similar to that, but this is going to be more of a liquidy consistency conditioner. So you use this after you shampoo, just go in, shampoo, you know, and then you go in with this. It's really nice and moisturizing. It doesn't feel like it at first. It kind of just feels like you're pouring water all over your scalp and you're kind of like, what is this? But if you really work it in and then you go in with your brush, brush it through, leave it in for a couple minutes and then rinse it out, your hair feels really, really nice and soft and it almost feels more plump. I don't find that this smells like vinegar in the hair. I was worried about that. I was like, oh, I don't know if I wanna use that. But I think that this really helps to do that last step of cleansing the hair, but giving it just enough conditioning, you know, to where your hair still feels really soft after a shampoo. After I go in with my um, detoxing products, I like to go in with something a little bit thicker. So I go in with a hair mask. This is the Subaki Premium Repair Mask. This, first of all, smells incredible. It is one of the 
best smelling hair masks in my opinion, right next to the Amika Soul Food hair mask. This is definitely more moisturizing versus being more of a protein hair mask, you know? The Fino hair mask I think is more protein while the Subaki hair mask is more moisture. So keep that in mind, pay attention to what your hair might need, but I like to use this right after, like I said, I do a good detox of my hair and then I'll just put all the moisture back into my hair with this. I'll leave it in for however long it takes me to wash my body, you know, shave, all those things. It is recommended, I think, that you keep your hair masks in longer than that. I used to do this. I would tie my hair up with my hair mask in and then get out of the shower for a little bit and then get back in the shower. I don't do that anymore. I just, I leave it in for a little bit and then I wash it out. But this, when you're washing it out, your hair feels like silk. It feels so smooth and soft. It's so, so good. If you can get your hands on this one, I highly recommend. But if not, I just recommend overall a hair, like a deep conditioner once a week. Okay, so we've made our way out of the shower. So now the things, the products that I like to use to further uh, care for my hair. I really like these two leave-in conditioners right now, the Briogeo, Briogeo Farewell Frizz Rosarco Milk Leave-In Conditioning Spray. Oldie but a goodie, you guys. This is a great, great product. It makes your hair super, super smooth. And I honestly feel like this really does help with frizz. I noticed that whenever I would use this in my hair, specifically again when my hair was still rehabbing it was still like losing all of the curl in it your hair when it's curly when it's wavy it can just be naturally really frizzy so whenever I was going in the process of just letting the perm leave my hair this really really saved me from frizz I feel like it tamed down my hair really nicely without weighing it down and making it feel filmy or sticky or heavy or anything like that. Same thing with the Fable and Main one. This is the detangling leave-in conditioner. It feels a little bit more lightweight whenever you're applying it to the hair. I like to spray it all over. I won't go this far up into my hair. I'll probably spray from here down with both of these products, but this feels like it's a little bit lighter, but it gives the same amount if not more hydration in the hair this is a little bit more frizz controlling while this is overall really good for softness and shine and just making your hair look really really smooth another leave-in conditioner this is called a hair primer i kind of don't use it like that so this is the lush super milk first of all uh this is the newest addition to like my hair routine oh my gosh this smells so good it smells so Oh, so good. So this is an almond, coconut, and oat milk hydrator that seals moisture into freshly washed hair and perks up dry curls. So this is very, very hydrating. I will say use this very sparingly, especially if you have fine, thin hair. If you have curly hair, if you have thick, coarse hair, you could definitely get away with using a little bit more of this. But mainly I got this because it smells incredible. I almost like using this as a hair perfume. This smells like vanilla lemon cakes specifically like you could smell a lot of lemon in there oh my gosh it smells so good you have to smell it i know that this went really really viral and they're starting to now get their inventory back at lush and i highly recommend that you go and smell this it smells very very sweet upon first sniff but because it's in your hair you get it almost like it's it's less intense than perfume on your body when you have in your hair. It's kind of like little wafts of like the super milk here and there. I have used this straight out of the shower, but I don't like using heat on my hair after I use this because it almost smells like, <laughs> I feel like it almost smells like a burnt marshmallow. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit like right away of course that kind of dissipates and then it just smells sweet again but I feel like this lasts a lot longer and smells the best in my hair whenever I put it in my hair once it's dried and especially after I've styled it like I'll put some in my palms like rub it together and I'll just do a quick little one of these things and it lasts really well in the hair. All right, so in terms of hair styling products, I have a lot. I have a lot that I cycle through and I debated on talking about everything, like my hairsprays, my mousse and stuff like that. I wanted to kind of like 
narrow it down just a little bit more than this extensive list and only talk about the products that I feel like I use every single time I style my hair. And that would be my heat protectant and my my uh, texturizing spray. The heat protectant I've been using, Moroccan Oil Perfect Defense. So this actually works in damp hair, even though it's an aerosol can. I love, I, I keep mentioning this these days, but I love the smell of Moroccan Oil products. I find that the aerosol um, spray really helps to evenly distribute the product and this protects your hair up to 450 degrees. And then for my texture spray, I've been using the Bumble and Bumble one for so, so long. I use Living Proof products too, by the way. I kind of replaced it with these and I haven't bought the Living Proof ones, but for the record, I think Living Proof styling products are incredible. I also have the Living Proof aerosol heat protectant spray. I'm almost out of that one. That's a really great one as well. The Bumble and Bumble dry spun texture spray light version. Before this, I was using just the original version and recently they came out with the light version. It's supposed to be better for long thick hair because it's not supposed to weigh your hair down as much. It just helps with any sort of texture that you may want in the hair. Again, this smells really, really nice. I love something that smells just really clean. I think that this gives me a lot of texture without being crunchy. It's really nice and soft in the hair. When it comes to slicking my hair back, I use a couple of different products. So this one, I'm not entirely sure. Oh, it's right here. The Lucidol L Hair Styling Stick. This is a Japanese brand. I did purchase this from my local Asian beauty store. It's kind of like that hair wax stick thing. This is fine and I use it because it's very travel friendly and it's just really convenient. But if I'm being completely honest with myself, I kind of like this better for slick backs. This is the got to be daring texturizing clay. You just take a little bit of this, warm it up between your fingertips and then just use it to like slick your hair back and it gives you such great hold. You need the tiniest, tiniest amount of this. For my baby hairs, my flyaways, I have two products that I actually really like and both of them are these little mascara wand product like gel things. This is the INH, what's this called? Quick Slick. I've had this for a very long time. As you can see, it does have that mascara wand type of brush right there and it holds your baby hairs down, especially when you have like a slick back, like I mentioned, but it doesn't look crunchy. It doesn't look hard or anything, and it doesn't feel like it. It actually almost makes my hair feel smoother. I think I've had this for over a year now. The other hair wand that I really like, I actually have a new one right here. I haven't opened one, but I forgot it in my room. and I don't feel like grabbing it. It's the brand Plus You. This is an incredible hair mascara wand. It's so good. The brush is huge. Like, look at that. It's a huge brush and it gets so much of your hair, it coats your hair so, so well, and again, doesn't feel crunchy, doesn't feel hard, makes my hair actually feel softer, but it gives me really good hold, but I highly recommend if you have a lot of baby hairs, maybe you have a lot of breakage that you're dealing with, it's great. You can also use it um, whenever you don't have a slick back, like maybe you styled your hair recently. I know that with me, if I blow dry or do a blowout or something, I have a lot of baby hairs sticking out and you can kind of just brush this through and it helps to bring those hairs down without it looking like you took some gel and like smeared it on your hair. <laughs> and I think lastly for my products is my dry shampoos. So this is my go-to, the Living Proof Perfect Hair Day Advanced Clean Dry Shampoo. Specifically, the Advanced Clean is my favorite, the one that comes in this silver bottle. It smells very, very clean, a little citrusy, again, very like hair salon. This makes your hair feel nice and clean. I used it on this side of my head today so you guys can see it. It says it actually makes your hair feel clean and I agree with that. As much as a dry shampoo can feel like clean hair, this is the cleanest my hair has felt with a dry shampoo and I have not looked back. I've been using this for years and years. I've gotten the regular size bottles. I've used the travel size bottles. I've gotten the jumbos. And whenever I find them on sale, I like to stock up on this because it is just my go-to. It's so easy to use because it is in this aerosol can. 
can quickly spray all in the hair. If my hair is very oily, I will spray this all over my head, leave it overnight, and then in the morning just judge all of it out, and then my hair looks and feels very, very clean and voluminous, but it also works really nicely in a pinch if I have to use it quickly and I have to style my hair like right away I'll spray this in leave it for like a minute or two and then I'll judge it out and it looks just as good it just doesn't give me as much oil control as if I left it overnight and then one that I have very recently started using but I'm already really really enjoying is this crown affair one this is their dry shampoo and it comes with this brush right here and it has a sifter in here and you basically just like brush it into the hair this smells incredible I talked about this in my last Sephora kits video because I got this in a kit recently. I think that the scent of this is yuzu, bergamot, and other things. I can't remember, but it smells so clean, very citrusy, very fresh. It doesn't smell too heavy, especially in the hair. It just kind of, again, is just this waft of clean. I feel like it distributes in the hair really nicely to where it doesn't leave me with a white cast in the hair. It doesn't take a lot of effort to brush it out of the hair. It's really, really nice. So those are my go-to dry shampoos currently. So I think that was everything that I wanted to cover. That's everything that you guys have asked me about in videos. Like I mentioned, all of my hair videos, I will link them in the description box down below. So check those out if you guys have any additional questions. Again, if I miss anything, please let me know in the comments down below. As always, I'll be linking everything down below for you guys, as well as tagging all of these products in the shopping tab for you to easily shop through. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos like this one. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.